are back with our guest talking about uh, the shuttle program coming to an end at some point. We have uh, Mike Fink, who's an astronaut, Dr. Charles Justice, a NASA pilot, aviation consultant, and author, Dr. Julie Robinson, ISS program scientist, and Mark Geyer, Orion vehicle program manager, which uh, that sounds like a really big job. It's a lot of stuff going on there. I want to address that when they announced that the shuttle program was going to come to an end. There were so many people who went, wow, so we're just going to wrap up and that's the end of NASA. Misconception, big misconception that you still hear people. Say. Right. I think part of it because it's such a great program, shuttle was such a great program, and a lot of attention to that when they see it ending, that's the natural conclusion. But we have a lot of uh, programs going forward, like Orion is the capsule that will take um, United States people out into the solar system, and we're designing and testing that right here at Houston. Yeah. All right. So the big question a lot of people have now is, well, how do we get up there now? What are we going to do? We're going to be, uh, for the near, ter near term, we're going to be flying with the Russians, and you know what? Which is a good thing you know Russians. Uh, yeah. uh, see, the <laughs> more you know, the more opportunity you have. And uh, we flew with the, I flew with the Russians twice. Yuri Gagarin launched off his own launch pad once. I launched off of Yuri's launch pad twice, and uh, <laughs> just for the record. But, but also, but it, it's just showing that the level of international cooperation. The Russian uh, Soyuz rocket is very safe, reliable, uh, relatively inexpensive, and it gets us to the space station and back. Yeah. But what's really exciting is in the next couple of years, we're going to have some commercial companies that uh, are going to be able, they're not NASA, but they're going to be able to take NASA astronauts to the International Space Station to low Earth orbit. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, really exciting, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, keep all of the jobs here in, in the U.S. and uh, fly Americans on American vehicles, but also just give us more opportunity to go fly in space. Yeah. How far away are we from... Uh, you know, hey, where are you guys going to go on vacation? I think we're going to go to the moon. Yeah, Bob and I are talking about the moon, maybe. Yeah, how far are we from, away from some kind of practical uh, point where people, uh, average citizens, can fly into space? Well, I think it's always going to be, it's always a dangerous business, at least in the beginning, right? It takes yeah. a lot of uh, energy to get somebody out of orbit. But as Mike talked about, there are companies now looking at trying to do that more routinely. Trying to do for the low Earth orbit is simpler than going to the moon and beyond. So that's how we're going to start that, yeah. trying some experiments. And when we say that. beyond, well, I know that we're you know, kind of dabbling into Mars and things like that. Where else can we conceivably go? And I always, you know, the sun's such an amazing thing, obviously, <laughs> but part of the problem there is you can only get so close it's before things hot. go bad. <laughs> yeah. I think it's hot in Houston. Yeah, yeah. I think it's hot in Houston, exactly. Exactly. But where are our biggest questions? And of course, lately, the whole thing about the black hole. So I think Mars is the big destination for people, right? Because of the possibility of life on there. So that. That is a, a destination that's pretty far away, so there's a few things we need to learn about how to get there, like extended durations in living in space, like yeah. we're doing on space station. And the moon is also an op opportunity to go learn how to build bases and use resources on a on a uh, object that's pretty close to Earth. Yeah. All right, I want to uh, end with because I, I always love to ask people who work in the space com program this question. We can send a man to the moon, but we still can't what? We still can't find a way to give us really cheap and plentiful uh, green energy. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, biofuels. Yeah. Green mm -hmm. energy. Um, the other one is, uh, you know, why can't we feed everybody on this planet? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take a big shift. I wasn't thinking along those lines at all. I was thinking about the fact that we can never predict the discovery we're going to make until we make it. Ah, uh, no, that's a good one. That's great. That's great. Which is the, the reason why you have to keep trying to discover. Exactly. Something. Yeah. I can't get my kids to do their chores. <laughs> <laughs> Minor. No, I think NASA has a program for that. I think that might be coming up. Great. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's funny. When I had done a radio show years ago and I had asked people to call in who had worked with the program or people, just normal human beings, to call in and share stories of what this program has meant to them, I was so shocked at how many practical uses. And there's a story I'll never forget. There's a man who said that he um, was paralyzed and as a child, it pained him to see his mother, who only weighed about 80-something pounds, pick up his heavy wheelchair and move it around because she was determined to get him out to the park and take him to places where other kids would play. Mm -hmm. And then he said, today, fast forward, the cool thing is his 8-year-old daughter can pick up his wheelchair and move it around like nothing because it's titanium. And so it was yeah. just, I just never will forget that and how touching that was. But there are all kinds of uh, things like that. 
and it's the reason why it's important for us to go on. So um, we'll make nice with the Russians because <laughs> you, you have a sense of humor and you know the language. And then, um, so at what point beyond then will we have another vehicle to take us without depending on another country at some point? Well, we're going to have the, maybe some commercial companies relatively so soon. So it will just be, the, yeah, okay. And then uh, working with uh, Mark's group is another group that's working on the next NASA rocket that will be able to take us to the moon, to the asteroids, and beyond. Yeah. But far. remember, in the meantime, we're doing research 24 7 right, right the ISS now. is out there right, right now. now. Yeah, they're exactly. up there right now working on that. So uh, amazing, amazing. And thank you all very much for sharing your insight with us. We had our trivia question at the top of the show, and the trivia question was, what department, city department, now occupies the building that was the first office for NASA? Our Facebook winner is Noga Parrot, and you all know the answer. What city department is that? Parks. parks. The Parks Department. <laughs> That's right, the Parks Department. It really is kind of cool if you go by there and see they've kind of redone the building but kept it in its original fare. But the reason why they need to do that was because we had these big pieces we were moving in and had to get closer to a waterway to get it all Get it all moved in there. All right. Uh, well, Dr. Charles Justice has a couple of copies of his specific impulse, the book specific impulse to give away to audience members, and we'll call those names a little bit later on. Thanks again. <laughs> For more information on the space program, visit nasa.gov. Up next, lasers were invented in 1960, but doctors are finding new uses for them every day to address a number of human issues from sun damage to wrinkles. Stay tuned to find out more.